Good morning, explorers. I'm so excited to see you all this morning, bright and early at 9 a.m. on Wednesday. So welcome back to another day of Aquarium Online Academy. My name is Sarah. I'm one of the educators here at the Aquarium of the Pacific, and I'm so excited you're tuning in because we are going to talk about these animals. Do you recognize them? I bet you do. We're going to talk all about sharks today. So what we're going to do today is first we're going to talk about what makes a shark a shark. Now we can look at these animals, like this one right here, and most of us can identify that as a shark. But I want to break it down and talk about what makes a shark a shark. What are all those things that we recognize on these animals that we know make them sharks? And then I'm going to open it up to you and I want to answer all your questions. So we're going to have a text line up on our screen. Cynthia is with me this morning and she just put this text line. That number is 562 286 one eight three eight. So while we're drawing and making observations and talking about what makes a shark a shark, I want you to start thinking about any questions you might have about sharks or any sharks that you want to learn more about and gather all those questions together. And after we're done drawing, you can text in those questions or while we're drawing, you can text in those questions. And then after we're done, we can answer all the things that you are curious about shark because these are fascinating animals. Let's take a look for a moment. So like I said, you can text in any questions you have. We love to hear from you. Questions, observations, things you're wondering. And that text line is to use if you are watching this program live. So it is 9 a.m., like I said, on Wednesday, March 16th. If you're watching after the fact, so we're no longer live, we still want to answer your questions. But we ask that you email us at that email address just below that phone number. It's live at lbaop.org. So it's not always made in that text line, but we always want to answer your questions. All right, explorers. Are you ready to get started? So like I said, we're gonna draw a shark. Now I'm gonna use a whiteboard and marker and you can draw along if you have the supplies necessary and all those necessary supplies are just a piece of paper and something to draw with. It could be a whiteboard if you have it. It can be scratch paper, construction paper, whatever you have available, or you can just follow along as I'm drawing. Cause I think drawing helps us to identify all of those things that make a shark a shark. So right now we are looking at Shark Lagoon, which is our exhibit here at the aquarium. And this is our webcam. So as we've mentioned before in many of our other programs, we have webcams in a lot of our exhibits so that you can check in on our animals any time of the day, any day of the week, any time if you can't make it here to the aquarium. And this is a live view. So if we walk outside right now, we'll be looking at the same thing we are all looking at here. So let's start making some observations, identifying some things that we see on these sharks, like big guy right here. This is our sand tiger shark, the largest shark we have. What markers or things on his body make him a shark? How do you know that that's a shark by looking at it? What things do you notice? Now we have a bunch of different types of sharks in here. We have big guy. He's a sand tiger shark. We have some black tip reef sharks. You can look out for those. They are, I think this one coming around right here is a black tip reef shark. But if you look at the top of their fins, it looks like it's dipped in black paint. We also have a gray reef shark. So it looks very similar to the black tip, but instead of having black on the ends of its fins, it's all gray. And then we have one, oh, here's our black tip. So here you, ooh, it's a good look of that black tip here, 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 and on all its fins. Excellent. And then the gray reef sharks look very similar, this one right here. They just don't have the black on the edge of their fins. And then we have two zebra sharks, which one of them, you may not have noticed is hanging out right here behind all this coral. And we'll get a closer look at zebra sharks a little bit later. And then the last shark we have in here is called a sand bar shark, not to be confused with our sand tiger shark. And the sand bar shark is our newest shark to join our group here in Shark Lagoon. And she is, <clears throat> excuse me, she looks very similar to the gray reef sharks, but her body's a little bit different, a little bit more angled. And if I see her, I'll point her out to all of you. All right. So one thing that I notice, and you are welcome to send in your observations as well, using that text line, 562-286-1838. One thing I want to start with is the shape of our shark's body. So take a look. Big guy is pretty long back here. But look at the shape of his body. And if we look at our other sharks, their shape is pretty similar. Now, we call the shape of a shark's body, or most of our sharks, fusiform, which is a big fancy word, but it really just means sort of like a lemon or a football shape. So imagine or think about what a football looks like. It's sort of like an oval that's kind of pinched on either end. So I'm going to go over to my document camera with my whiteboard 
and I'm going to draw that fusiform shape, so sort of like a football, just like this, or a lemon. Just like that. So here is the body of my shark. All right, so that doesn't really look much like a shark though, does it? So we need to add some things to its body to make it look more like a shark. So if we go back to Shark Lagoon for a moment, what things can we add on to their body to make it look more like a shark? Hmm. We have a joke here at the aquarium that when we're using our webcams for any kind of program, whenever we start talking about an animal, they tend to disappear from view. But we can see them back there. And maybe Cynthia can bring up a picture of a shark. There's a shark right there. Aha, excellent. So here's our black tip reef shark. So what things can we add to our shark that makes it look more like this shark? What is our shark missing? Well, one big thing, I keep calling this a black tip reef shark, and the black tips are on its fins. So this shark needs fins. And the fins are really important because fins help sharks to swim. And we'll talk about all the different fins. So the first one is going to be that fin on the top. We call that the dorsal fin. So like that. Now the dorsal fin is really important. It helps with balance. So think about if you are standing and you decide to stand on one foot. So you lift up one foot and you're only standing on the other foot and you start to wobble. What do you do? You either fall over or to catch yourself from falling over, you just put down your other foot and that helps you to balance. And that is sort of what the dorsal fin does. It helps the shark to balance. Now this fusiform shape, like I called it a football, if it looks like a football and it moves through the water or the air, it's gonna move in a spiral direction, right? If you throw a football correctly, it moves in a spiral. But adding this fin on top prevents it from moving in that spiral motion, which wouldn't be good for a football, but it's very good for a shark because it's not very good for a shark to spin in a spiral through the water. So having this dorsal fin helps a shark to balance. Now, when we look at different sharks, the size of the dorsal fin can change. And that tells us something about the shark. So the larger the dorsal fin, the more tall and triangular shape that it is, the faster that shark is gonna be able to swim. Because if they're swimming really fast and something knocks them off balance, they have that dorsal fin to help keep them steady. But some sharks, they naturally don't swim very fast and we can identify those sharks because their dorsal fin might be a lot smaller. It might be kind of less pointy, kind of just like that, or even longer, or just like a little triangle. So depending on the size of the dorsal fin, that can give us a hint to how fast that shark is gonna be able to swim. But that's just one of their fins, their dorsal fin. Another fin is their tail fin or their caudal. Now it's not cuddle, it's not like they like to give hugs with their tails. It's a caudal fin, and that's the fin that helps them move forward. Now I'm gonna draw the fin. It's kind of like two triangles, sort of. Sometimes the top one can be longer. Let me make mine a little bit bigger than the smaller one. Now I'm gonna have Cynthia put us back in Shark Lagoon, and I want you to notice what direction are they moving that caudal tail. Oop, there's our zebra shark. When they swim, are they moving it side to side or up and down? Let's take a look. We've got some sharks coming on the far side over there. And as they swim by, are they moving that caudal tail up and down like this or side to side like this? What do you notice? We can even take a look at the fish in the exhibit too because they have the same fins as our shark and they use their fins in very similar ways, including that caudal tail. So here comes a shark right down here. Take a look. That's right, it's moving it side to side. Oh, here comes big guy. He's gonna show us a perfect example of moving his tail side to side. Very slowly, but he's doing it. So sharks and fish, they move their tails side to side when they swim, and that's what helps push them forward. If it's a thing like a whale or a seal or sea lion or a dolphin, a mammal, they move their tails up and down and that helps propel them through the water. So that's a big difference between those two groups of animals, fish and sharks and mammals is the way they move their tail to swim forward. Here's our zebra shark moving that tail side to side. And you can see with that zebra shark, their tail is really long 
and they don't really have that second lower lobe. Like if we go back to my picture, that zebra shark doesn't really have this lower lobe to its tail. It really just has one long tail at the top. I heard someone recently describe it as kind of shaped like a hockey stick, which I enjoy because I'm a big hockey fan. But it's just that kind of long sloping shape as opposed to these triangles like we see here. And then if we were to look at the dorsal fin, that top fin for the zebra shark, it's one of those smaller triangles. And so that tells us, like we see here, that this shark is not the fastest swimmer. And that's totally fine because it lives a very different lifestyle than some of those other sharks who need to swim really fast. Excellent. Now, if we look at this picture right here, we have another fin right here. These are the pectoral fins. So if you take your arms and you stick them out to the side, these are your pectoral fins, the fins on the side. Now, if you're a fish, a lot of fish will use their pectoral fins to swim forward or they'll help them for steering. They move them a lot more. They have a lot of movement in their pectoral fins. But in a moment, when we jump into Shark Lagoon, you'll notice for sharks, they kind of look like airplane wings and they don't really move them. Now, they'll use them for steering, but it's more they kind of lean from side to side to help them steer rather than move them back and forth. Like here, look. Look at those airplane wings, right? They stick straight out from the side and we don't see a lot of movement in them, whereas we would see more movement in a fish's pectoral fins. Excellent. So let's add some pectoral fins to our shark. So I'm going to add one here and then another one, little ones, gonna be like it's coming from the other side of its body. Excellent. So now this is starting to look a little bit more like a shark. It's got some fins. It's got its dorsal fin right there so that it can balance. It has a pector or its pectoral fins over there for steering. It has its tail or caudal fin to help push it forward. But my shark is not complete yet. It's still missing some things. What do you think my shark is missing? What do we need to add to its body to make it look more shark-like? That's right. We need to add a mouth, right? That's a very common, important thing for a shark. It's something we use that to recognize sharks, but it's also important for a shark's survival. Now, I'm going to draw a triangle for the mouth, and we like to joke that triangles are shark's favorite shape, because if you see, there's lots of triangles all over my shark's body. So I'm going to erase a little bit right here, and I'm going to draw a little bit more, an open triangle like that as my shark's mouth. But it's still missing something, right? What does it need in its mouth? What do you have in your mouth? If you smile and you turn to, if you're in a classroom, you turn to the person sitting next to you, you might be wearing a mask. So what thing, move your tongue around your mouth. What do you feel inside your mouth? You have teeth, right? You have teeth. So we have to add some more triangles as the teeth for my shark. All right. I'd say it's starting to look a lot more shark-like, but is it still missing anything? An eyeball. Absolutely, it's missing an eyeball. So I'm going to draw one eye right here. Now we're going to assume the other eye is on the other side of my shark. Now sharks' eyes, they work really well at certain times of day. So think about how for us, if it's really dark out or you turn off all the lights, we can't see very well, right? We see a lot better when it's light. Here's big guy's eye. He's got kind of a beady little eye. Shark's eyes look different depending on the type of shark. But most sharks can see best at dusk and dawn. So that's when it's not fully daytime and it's not fully nighttime. It's sort of those in-between times. So that's like in the evening before it gets to nighttime and in the early morning before it's daytime. And so sharks often hunt or look for their food during those times because that's when they can see best. Now, it doesn't mean they can't see at other times. It's just a little harder, a little bit more murky for them. But they have fairly good eyesight. Now, looking at this picture, we can see big guy's mouth with his teeth. We can see his eye. What about this hole right here? Where am I sticking my finger up? That's right, I'm sticking it up his nose. Now, sharks do have a nose. So their nose is really important because it's used for smelling. Not for breathing, for smelling. So sharks can smell. They have excellent sense of smell. And they can smell things from quite a distance. And so I'm going to draw a little nostril on my shark. Now their nose is shaped like a C. And water comes in and goes out. And that allows them to smell. But like I said, their nose is only used for smelling. So think about it. Our nose serves two purposes, right? 
We can smell with our nose. We can also do something else. We can breathe with our nose, right? We can breathe through our mouth, but we can also breathe through our nose. But sharks, their nose is only used for smelling, which means they have to be able to breathe in a different way, right? Because breathing is something that's essential to all animals for survival. So how do you think sharks are able to breathe if it's not through their nose? They use their mouth for it, but there's something on a shark's body that allows it to breathe. Maybe we can take a look at a picture of a shark. Aha, now you might recognize this shark. This is a pretty common, fairly recognizable shark. You're right, this is a great white shark. It's a perfect example for us to see all the different parts of our shark, especially these things right here. What are those lines? That's right, those are the shark's gills. And gills are how a shark can breathe. So they don't have lungs like we do. If you take a deep breath, either through your mouth or your nose, we can feel our lungs, right? Your chest expands because you have lungs, almost like a balloon that fills with air, and then we release it. And that is allowing us to breathe. But sharks, they don't have lungs like us. Instead, they use their gills. Now, inside these slits right here, under the gills, are things called gill rakers and gill filaments. And they look like little spikes and little um, hairs, almost like a little broom inside there. And what the shark is able to do with these gills is when they open their mouth, they pull in water, and then the water goes over their gills, and all those little hairs and filament things will catch tiny bubbles of oxygen that are in the water, releasing the water, catching those bubbles, and allowing them to breathe. So I'm going to go over to my shark, and I'm going to draw some gills. Now, I drew five gill slits because most sharks have five gill slits. Now, there are exceptions, which is why I said most. And there are two exceptions. There is a shark that has six gill slits, and we gave it the apt name of a six-gilled shark. And then there is one shark that has seven gills, and just like the six-gilled shark, we call the seven-gilled shark a seven-gilled shark. So sometimes we come up with really creative, different names for animals, and sometimes scientists just call it like we see it, describing what we see, and that's how what we name the animal. But most sharks, like I said, they have five gill slits. Now, all right, now there's a couple more things I want to draw on my shark, but I did have a question come in, and I'm going to save that question for when we're done with our shark drawing. We have a couple more things to add, and then we'll get to your question. So Mallory, I see you texted in a question, so hang tight and we will answer it. But there's two more things I want to add to my shark. There's one is I want to add a line right here. Now, you may be wondering what this line is, but it serves a couple different purposes for a shark. The first thing is sharks and fish have sort of a very faint dotted line in the middle of their body, and that is called a lateral line. Have you heard that term before, lateral line? We find lateral lines on fish and sharks, and that acts as hearing for them. They can sense vibrations along those lateral lines. So you might see videos of, sh of a big group of fish all swimming together, and they move together as almost one unit but it's a bunch of different little fish. The way they're able to all move together is using their lateral line. So they feel the vibrations, the movement in the water of all the fish next to them, and then they're able to all move together. So sharks and fish have this lateral line to help them feel things around them. It can also help them sense prey or predators because they can feel the vibrations around them. Now, the other thing this line kind of helps us uh, determine is the coloration of our sharks. So most sharks we're gonna look at are gonna have a dark top and a light body. A light bottom, sorry. If Cynthia can bring up that great white shark one more time. We've got that line right there. And that's pretty much where the lateral line is. The lateral line is harder to see, and it's not always just on that color change. But this image shows us the dark top of the great white shark and the light bottom. So sharks have this thing. It's called counter shading, and it's a type of camouflage. And it protects the animal from above and below. So if you're on a boat or above the water and you look down, the water's gonna look really dark and the back of that shark is gonna blend in. And then if you're the below the surface looking up, there's gonna be sunlight shining down and the belly is gonna blend in. And so a lot of sharks and fish and birds and other animals we see have this different coloration where half the body is one color, half is another, and that is counter shading. Now the one last thing I wanna draw on my shark, we can stand this picture for a moment, is right here along the snout. Now it's a little bit hard to see, maybe you know what, maybe we'll go back to that picture of big guy up close. 
because they sharks have this really cool sense, this really cool ability. All these little freckles you see right here, these little polka dots. It almost looks like it could just be the pattern on Big Guy's body, but those things are actually something called ampullae of Lorenzini, or we can just call them ampullae. Now this term ampullae refers to the sense that sharks have where they're able to sense electric charges. Now, you might be wondering why would there be electricity running through the ocean, but I want everyone to take your hand and put it over your heart. Do you feel that beating? Hope you feel it beating. So your heart is beating, and every time it beats, it sends out a teeny, tiny electrical charge. Now, it's not enough electricity to hold a light bulb and turn it on, but sharks have the ability to sense all those tiny electrical charges that your heartbeat sends out, and that allows them to find their food. Now, it has to be close range. So it can't be miles and miles away, but close range, sharks are able to find their food by using their ampullae. So one more time, going back to my drawing. And I'm gonna add what look like little freckles. And those are the ampullae on my shark's snout. Now I would think, I think this looks like a pretty good shark. What do you all think? I hope you agree. Now, if you drew a shark and you'd like to share it with us, we would love to see your drawings. You can text them in to that number on the screen, 562-286-1838. We love to see your drawings if you'd like to share. All right, now we've gone to the second half of our program where we're gonna answer some questions. So I see Ms. Amador's classes joining us. Ms. Amador, it's so nice to see or to hear from you all again. We know you've watched a lot of our program, so it's lovely to see your questions coming in. So back to Mallory's question. Mallory asks, why do sharks have fins? Well, let's take a look. We're back in Shark Lagoon and watch how our sharks move. Now imagine if we removed those fins or if they didn't move at all, what would happen to the shark? It would sink to the bottom. So those fins help them with movement. And you may not realize it, but movement is a part of survival, right? Sharks need to be able to move. They need to be able to find their food. Sometimes they have to chase after their food. And for some sharks, they have to keep moving so water can go into their mouth and pass over their gills. And so if they didn't have these fins to help them move, it would affect their survival. So the fins are helping them swim and they help them survive. Great question. All right, we have another question from Micah. And Micah wants to know what sharks live in the deep sea? Ooh, great question. Well, none of the sharks that we have here are deep sea sharks. The sharks that we have here in Shark Lagoon, they are tropical species. They live in warmer waters. And they live in pretty shallow water, they can live in shallow waters, like those, these coastal coral reefs, kind of like we see here. But there are some species like the Greenland shark. If you've heard about the Greenland shark, we talk about the Greenland shark as one of the oldest living sharks. It can live to be a couple hundred years old. And one of the ways it can survive so long is it lives really, really, really deep in the water. And a couple advantages to living deep is it's really cold. And in cold water, it sort of slows down the growth of your body. And so being in cold water, it almost like preserves their body and allows them to live longer. There was also less predators, so less things that could harm it living in the deep water. So the Greenland shark is one of those deep water sharks. There's also a shark called a goblin shark, which is just about as scary as its name sounds, in my opinion. And that's another deep water shark. All right, Nicole wants to know, why do sharks eat fish? Is it their favorite? It can be, but Nicole, it just depends on the type of shark. So here in Shark Lagoon, this shark right here, the black tip, this one here, the gray reef, they love fish. That is their favorite food. Now they're not eating the fish in their exhibit because those types of fish are not their favorite. And we hand feed our sharks to make sure that they're eating enough food, but fish are their favorite food. But if we think about our zebra shark, oh, hello, Ray. If we think about our zebra shark, oh, it's just on the move right here, this one, that spends a lot of time sitting on the ocean floor. Its mouth is also shaped on the bottom. So if we look at these two sharks right here, perfect view, mouth in front, can't really see its mouth because its mouth is on the bottom. So they don't really eat fish because that's a lot harder for them to catch. If their mouth is on the bottom, in order to eat a fish in front of them, they'd have to turn their body upward. And so instead, they're gonna find food. Oh, here we go. This is our zebra shark. Their mouth is on the bottom. It's angled downward. And so it's easiest to find food that's sitting right in front of them. And most fish don't sit on the ocean floor right in front of a shark. But this shark might find a clam or a shrimp or another kind of crustacean hiding in the sand. And so this type of shark will eat something different besides fish. It'll eat things it can find in the sand. But then there are some sharks who do love to eat fish. All right, next question. Kinsley wants to know, are sharks the fastest animal in the sea? 
Ooh. You know what? The fastest shark is called a shortfin mako, and it is very fast. But there's also a fast fish called a sailfish, and I am not sure which one is faster. But I know both of those, the make, shortfin mako and the sailfish, are two of the fastest fish in the ocean. Now, I say fish because sharks are actually a type of fish. But I'm not sure which one is faster. I don't know if Cynthia is looking that up this moment. But you can look it up too. Shortfin mako versus a sailfish. They're two very, very fast animals living in the ocean. And I think those are probably the two fastest of anything in the ocean. All right, more questions from Miss Amador's class. So Lottie wants to know, sorry, which, ooh, so the sailfish is faster. So the sailfish is the fast, ooh, that's the tongue twister. The sailfish is the fastest fish in the ocean, but the shortfin mako is the fastest shark. The sailfish? So Cindy was just reading me that the sailfish can reach over 200 miles an hour when it's dive bombing and trying to catch its food. That's mind blowing to me. It's like, poof, that's so fast for a fish to move. And then the, make, the, fa the short fin mako, I think, can swim maybe 50, 60 miles an hour in bursts of speed. But they're two very fast animals that we have living in our ocean. All right, Lottie's question is, how many teeth do sharks have? And how do they fall out? And do they grow back? Those are some great questions. Check out Big Guy's Teeth. Now, sharks can have up to 30,000 teeth in their lifetime. So I don't know how many Big Guy has right here in this picture at one time, but over their lifetime, they can have 30,000 teeth. That's three zero comma zero zero zero. Now, shark skeleton, so what makes up their body, right? Our skeleton is made of bone. Shark skeleton is made of cartilage. Now, cartilage is something we do have in our body. We have it in the tips of our nose. If you wiggle your nose, it's a little squishy and flexible. And same with our ear. You can fold it over. And that's different from bone because we can't fold our bones over, right? If you fold your bone over, you'd break it. So bones are pretty rigid, right? They don't move very much, whereas cartilage is flexible. It can bend a lot. And so a shark skeleton is made all of cartilage, which means their teeth are not stuck into bone the way they're stuck into bone in our mouth. And it means they fall out a lot easier and quicker than they do in our mouth. So every couple of bites of food a shark might take, those teeth will fall out. But as you can see here, they have more and more teeth to fill in. So they lose teeth quite often, every couple bites of food, but they always have more teeth to fill in so that they're always able to have teeth to eat. Because imagine if a shark had no teeth, it'd be very hard for them to catch and eat their food. All right, we have a couple more minutes and a couple more questions. So Elliot wants to know, why do sharks' eyes look black? Do sharks have different colored eyes? Ooh, maybe we can take a look at a couple different sharks in just a moment. And they do have different shaped eyes. I think most shark eyes are pretty black, maybe around the pupil right here. It'll be a little bit different color. But they are different shaped just depending on the type of shark. And that also depends on where that shark lives. So some sharks might live in clearer water. Some sharks might live deeper, so they might need to be able to take in more light into their eyes. Some sharks might live in more murky water. Ooh, look at this. So this is a big eye thresher, and it lives up to its name of having a really big eye. Now we see in the thresher and the gray white that they almost looks like it's just a black circle, like Elliot was pointing out. Whereas with big eye, right, looks like it's almost like just a hole there. But for big eye, it was like a little dot. And then, I don't know if we have a close-up of a gray reef shark. I think it looked, or even a zebra shark to see a different eye. So look at this one. This one even looks different, right? That black circle in the middle is a little bit larger than we saw on the sand tiger shark. And let's take a look at a zebra shark. One more. Yeah, it almost looks like a cat eye, right? It's a little bit different. So it just depends on the type of shark. But I would say most of them have sort of blackish eyes. All right, we have one more question. Yunu asks, how long do sharks live? Ooh, that's another great question. It's interesting with a lot of these questions, we say it's shark dependent, right? It depends on the type of shark. And that's because sharks are very different, right? We've looked at a couple sharks that we have here and they all are very different, right? They're 
includes to how long they can live. So some sharks, smaller sharks, will only live about 10, 15, 20 years. Things like our swell sharks or leopard sharks, horn sharks, ones that we find in our local waters here in the kelp forest. But then there's sharks like I mentioned the Greenland shark, which can live like three, four, five hundred years, which is super, super long. And then sharks like the great white might live to 60, 70 years. So it really just depends on the type of shark to know how long they live. Excellent. So these are some white tip reef sharks. There are so many different types of sharks. There are over 400 species of sharks, so over 400 different types of sharks. And today we've just looked at a very small handful of them. Now we are out of time, but I hope you enjoy drawing a shark and learning all the things that make a shark a shark. And then I'm glad I got to answer some of your questions and I hope that sparked even more questions. Now, if you have more questions about sharks based on the things we talked about, or if your brain's still churning and looking for things, I hope that you still use that text line. I'll have Cynthia put it up on our screen. So you can use that text line for the next couple minutes or you can email us. We would love to hear your questions. Right here is that information. And I hope you have a good rest of your day. And one more thing before you go, we have one more program today coming up at 10 a.m. And that's gonna be Cynthia's program in Spanish and it is ABCs in Spanish. So this is a great time if you are practicing Spanish, if you wanna learn Spanish or you speak Spanish to join us to learn some ABCs of different animals in the ocean. All right, everyone, have a good rest of your day.